Last week at E3, Sony unveiled its first gameplay trailer for The Last of Us 2, and it certainly impressed. After all, Naughty Dog is known for pushing visual boundaries, and this demo offers a glimpse of its latest technological innovations. Now on the surface, it looks great as expected. From its detailed characters to its lush environments, the game is certainly shaping up well. But if you look a little closer, there are some remarkable new improvements on display. The key features which I believe define the presentation this time then are animation and interaction. You see, there is a fluidity to the animation on display here that goes above and beyond any currently available game that I've played. Naughty Dog has always been known for its work in animation with fluid motion and expertly crafted blending and transitions, but The Last of Us 2 pushes things to the next level. So what are they doing here? Well, the first major change comes in the form of motion matching. There's been a lot of buzz around this technique as of late, and Naughty Dog has confirmed the use of it here, but how does this vary compared to how motion capture data is typically used in a game, and what benefits does it offer to the player? Well, firstly, in traditional motion capture, the actors are suited up and perform any number of necessary actions for the game. Animators take this data, cut it up into usable chunks, and then massage it to produce usable animation chunks that can then be implemented into the game. From there, the process can involve setting up state machines and the like, but the key thing here is that it's very time consuming. Now, this is a very basic summary, but from speaking with animators working in games, it certainly requires a lot of work to achieve lifelike animation, and things like transitions require a lot of additional bespoke animation work as well. The idea behind motion matching then is to simplify this process while simultaneously producing smoother results. The basic gist involves capturing lots of data from a motion rig and feeding that data into a database where the game can basically look up and pull animations based on context of what the player is attempting to do. This data is constantly being scanned for appropriate animations while blending between the two occur in real time. From what I understand, it's a more systems-driven approach that results in fluid animation that is both easier to work with, but it doesn't sacrifice the responsiveness which is key to an interactive game. If you're interested in learning more, be sure to check out the GDC 2016 presentation that I've linked in the description. It's really good. As for its use in The Last of Us, I think the results kind of speak for themselves. This isn't the first game to make use of motion matching, Ubisoft's For Honor was also designed in this way, but Naughty Dog's approach feels even more refined. There's no real evidence of animation snapping between various transitions, and Ellie moves naturally through the world with a proper weight to each motion. It's subtle in many ways, but ultimately very effective. Let's look at an example. Watch her motions here. After nearly being spotted, Ellie drops down to this lower level, concealing her bow in the process. Now watch as she climbs up this van. Two unique animations are used here for each stage of the climb. Her dominant leg changes per climb. Then she reaches out to place her hand on a nearby car. As in previous Naughty Dog games, this is likely achieved using ray casting to determine the distance from the object. The appropriate animation is then selected and used with great precision. Now as she goes in for a kill, another AI appears and alerts the others. Ellie quickly pulls out a bow, fires a shot, then conceals it before dodging. All of this happens seamlessly. We also know now that the game features both a dedicated crouch button and a dodge button, so the animation during this sequence, which is remarkably fluid, seems more realistic based on the type of situations that have played out in previous titles from the studio. It's easy to imagine this as a series of dodges and attacks. It's just that now the animation system greatly increases the fluidity of the scene without introducing any sort of snapping between different animations. Oh, and here's another cool detail. Check out the crumbling debris caused by an enemy bullet. This later sequence is another great demonstration of how smoothly animations are blended. Ellie can grab and throw a bottle as part of an animation chain. It's easy to imagine tapping the circle button as you approach the bottle to grab it, then quickly throwing it using auto-targeting. The animation system ensures that it all plays out without any visible snapping or glitches. Well, at least on Ellie. If you look closely at the bottle, you can kind of see how they're cheating here. It sort of floats up off the surface over a couple frames and then lands in her hand. Which is actually kind of a good thing as it suggests that what we are seeing is indicative of the game itself. Overall though, the effect is convincing. The same goes for death animation. 
there's no visible transition between pre-death state and the death animation itself. And of course, facial animation is great too. The cutscenes themselves are likely performance captured and do look very natural, just as they did in Uncharted 4. It's also likely that they've moved to using real-time cutscenes in this game, just like they did with Uncharted 4. If you remember, The Last of Us and the first three Uncharted games all used pre-rendered sequences based on what was being rendered by the game engine. However, facial animation is also really good in the game itself. Check out the expression on Ellie's face here. She winces in pain while in cover. The player is still in control at this point, but it feels really natural. Or how about the fear in this guy's face just before Ellie finishes him off? Or perhaps the way in which this character reacts to finding Ellie, only to be shot dead within a second. And how about that death animation, by the way? Even this scene, where the crowd sort of winces as the man is sliced open, feels really natural. In fact, this scene as a whole is kind of interesting since it suggests that players are still in full control here. This is a scripted scene, but what we don't know is if Ellie could interact with the crowd. If she were to open fire on these guys, what would happen? I assume we'll see more scripted sequences like this, and it'll be curious to see how the game handles this sort of gameplay. We'll just have to wait to find out, of course. Animation is further enhanced by the addition of collision-based mechanics and momentum. Swinging a large weapon around a scene can have a real impact on the surroundings and the characters. When this character swings and misses, he realistically bashes through the scenery with objects flying off in proper directions according to momentum. More importantly, the impact from a weapon on an enemy now causes them to react accordingly. Notice how his torso reacts to each swing, almost as if you're caving it in. Physical contact seems to play a significant role this time, with character meshes seemingly deforming on contact. This kiss sequence early in the demo, for instance, appears surprisingly natural, partly due to slight facial deformation when the two models connect. The demo also teases other elements which Naughty Dog is working towards. AI plays a huge role in a game like this, and the team is working on realizing more natural behavior between non-player characters. Enemies are set to feature a wider gray area with sort of fuzzy knowledge of the player's location. AI can communicate using voice and sight while searching for traces of Ellie. This is key to a great stealth experience, of course. Managing that gray area is the most difficult aspect, and this demo highlights what we might expect in the final game. Of course, to be fair, the original game didn't quite live up to its E3 demo in terms of AI interaction, but a lot has changed since it was in development, so let's wait and see what they can pull off here with the sequel. Another key element in selling the world are the physics. Such properties are applied to a wide range of objects in this demo. The hair and clothing featured across every character model moves and reacts realistically to external forces. The sleeves and tail of Ellie's shirt bounces around as she moves through the environment, for instance. And the long jackets of her foes whip around during encounters like this, and generally everything just feels really natural. This applies to the foliage animation as well. It's not a perfect simulation of each individual branch or anything, but there are enough branches that react to your movement that it feels natural. If there is one sort of concern I could voice about the demo at this point, it's the characters. The enemies that you're fighting are supremely detailed, but as far as I can tell, there's only like two or three of them in this demo. They all look very, very similar. But because this is such an early demo, we're going to have to wait to see how it plays out in the final game. Okay then, so animation, interaction, and AI are all very promising at this stage, but there's a lot going on visually elsewhere as well. Lighting, for instance, plays a huge role in The Last of Us Part II, just as it did in the original game. You see, with The Last of Us, Naughty Dog developed a means for simulating ambient lighting. This is a world mostly devoid of direct illumination, of course, so indirect lighting is critical to the look and feel of the environment. Looking across the world, everything just feels well integrated and stable. The shadows, the way the objects are shaded, the contact shadows, everything, it all just sits perfectly within the environment and it feels like a complete scene. And thanks to all of the additions of physical interactions and whatnot, it also feels more interactive as well. And I also think it's quite representative of what we will see in the final game. It does seem to share aspects with Uncharted 4 for instance. And if you look closely in certain scenes you can certainly detect flaws. Take a look at the screen space reflections in this scene for instance. If you look closely, there are visible artifacts here in the reflection. 
The demo also makes really nice use of motion blur, which helps accentuate each of the animations, but it isn't perfect. If you pause on a single frame, for instance, you can see that the sample count on the motion blur itself isn't that high, which is kind of similar to Uncharted 4, I suppose. I still think it looks good in motion, but again, they did add the option to disable it or reduce it in Uncharted 4, so if you don't like the effect, it's probably nothing to worry about. I'll certainly be leaving it enabled, however. Another nice touch here is the use of volumetric lighting, and this is true volumetric lighting rather than the screen space variety. I'm not yet sure how this has been achieved here, something we'll have to look at more closely when the final game is released, but it really does help simulate the effect of light scattering through this misty atmosphere. And it really is quite misty. This whole scene is sort of pseudo rainy, there's a lot of wet surfaces throughout. So the specular highlight work is really nice and everything just sort of feels damp and nasty. Texture and material quality is also top notch as usual. With an environment this wet, much of the world is covered in water and mud. There's a high specularity on things such as pavement and metal across the environment. These ferns also showcase a nice tight specular. Of course, a great material system should never be judged by specularity alone. The demo features plenty of diffuse materials as well, and those look equally good. Check out this truck here. The slightly rusty paint features what looks like beads of water across its surface, which reflects light differently than the plastic headlight housing and metal trim surrounding that. The rubber tire appears somewhat more diffuse, while the alloy wheels just appear rather dull. I also like the way the light interacts with this wrecked out sedan up here. The rusty paint and license plate on the left appear diffuse as the distant fire lights the surface, while the side here gives the impression of light reflected from outside of the parking garage. This shop later in the demo also features a nice mix of materials. Notice how the specular varies between these two different surfaces here. One is sort of a shiny metal and the other is a more dull plastic. And speaking of dull, this countertop over here still manages to show a diffuse reflection of the patrolling enemy. The world of this game is not a shiny place, and I really appreciate the wide variety of material types used across the environment. It helps it feel more grounded. There's just so many little details throughout though. While we're in this scene for instance, notice how this explosion causes the sea in Merci to swing about in place. Pretty cool. Or how the shelves crumble when you push an enemy into them. Or during your entry, the way the door blows apart in response to enemy gunfire. See, we're drifting back into animation and interactions again, but really, I think that just speaks to the quality of everything on display here. You can break apart all these details all you want, but what really sells the game is the consistency of everything. It all feels so carefully crafted and consistent, which is no small task. So at this point then, you might be wondering, how does this demo stack up against the earlier teaser trailers? After all, this does look very nice, but are we really at the level of quality seen in those trailers? Well, the second trailer shown at Paris Games Week is the more recent of the two, and it certainly feels consistent with what we're seeing here. It's another rainy environment, and character detail feels comparable, with excellent animation work, though this is purely a cinematic. I'm sure things will change between this 2017 trailer and the final game, but it does feel pretty similar to what we're seeing now in this demo. The original 2016 trailer, however, is more of a question mark. There's a few elements of rendering which appear higher quality than what we're seeing now in this gameplay demo. Reflections are nearly flawless in this trailer, for instance, but they still exhibit rendering flaws in the gameplay demo. The same is kind of true of Depth of Field, which appears higher quality as well, though it still looks great in the demo. But at the same time, when you look at individual pieces in this video, it doesn't really appear to be a huge leap here. The forest sequence at the beginning is comparably detailed to the demo area, even if the resulting image quality may not quite match. So my best guess for now is that the original trailer is basically amped up with a few additional rendering features specifically for this showcase, but as we can see the actual gameplay trailer really isn't that far off. The big question then is, can we expect the final game to look this good? Well, that's a tough one and not one we can truly answer just yet obviously, but there was a lot of backlash early on about enhanced trailers during this generation. And if you think about it, Naughty Dog's gameplay demos for Uncharted 4 were actually really comparable to the final game. 
Okay, so that 60 FPS announced trailer, maybe not so much, but the PSX gameplay demo was reasonably close despite some changes, while the demos that followed were extremely accurate to the final product. So if I were a betting man, I'd say that the final game will likely deliver visuals very much the same or on par with this gameplay demo. Maybe even better, who knows? I certainly can't wait to find out. Of all the demos shown at Sony's conference this year then, this remains the most impressive overall in my opinion. Now of course, the other major first party titles are all spectacular to behold, no doubt. But there's just this level of detail and precision that you get with a Naughty Dog game that's really difficult to beat. These guys really push themselves to the absolute max, and it shows. But that's about all for now though. Hopefully we'll see more of the game in the coming year or so, and can't wait to play the final. But if you enjoyed this video in the here and now, be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell up there, and of course follow us over on Twitter. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is John signing off. I give you guys two weeks until you're back together. Not gonna happen. <laughs>